In this video, we will talk about all the different types of whitening your teeth. Some are long-term and some are not, and why some methods seem to work and actually don't. I'm Rick Buck and I've been a dentist for 14 years. I like to cover all things oral health related, including the greatest dental products and product reviews. So subscribe if you have teeth and you care about health. You may not know this, but there are many ways in which your teeth can whiten. Some are long-term and some are not. Some can trick you to think something works long-term and some are legitimate. In this video, we will talk about all the different types of whitening your teeth. So let's get into it now. We'll start with removing surface stains to whiten your teeth. Sometimes the surface of our teeth have stains that are known as extrinsic stains. They can be black and brown stains from coffee, tea, or soda. Or more commonly, they can be yellow staining of tenaciously and tightly bound plaque to your teeth. If you remove these stains, then your teeth obviously will get more white as the enamel starts to show through. The results from removing surface stains will last as long as it takes until the stains return. What to know about removing surface stains is the results can also be limited. So once the surface stains are gone, removing surface stains will no longer help. Now, why is this important? When you see toothpaste that are promoted as teeth whitening, it is mostly for their ability to remove surface stains. But that's not what most people think. Most people think that they are called whitening toothpaste because of their ability to remove stains within the teeth, internal stains, which we will get into in just a moment. However, whitening toothpaste aren't entirely a good thing. And in my opinion, I would avoid these types of toothpastes. Why? The reason they can remove tenacious surface stains that others can't is because they are so abrasive. People don't realize it, but toothpaste are really abrasive. They can wear down the enamel of your teeth. So here's a study that they do every once in a while of the most abrasive toothpaste. And you can see most of the whitening toothpaste are the most abrasive ones. There are some ones that aren't abrasive, but that's because they use a different method. Charcoal toothpaste are also very abrasive, which is why some people claim they are so good at whitening. The reason this is a bad thing is because abrasive toothpaste can contribute to gum recession and the thinning of your enamel. And once the plaque stains are gone, then they aren't doing any benefit further to whiten your teeth. And since the underlying levels of your teeth are more yellow, the thinning of the enamel can lead to more yellow teeth, but it doesn't stop there. The roots of your teeth are not made of enamel and they wear much faster too. So then what happens, it can contribute to gum recession and then it will contribute to the wearing down of your roots. The wearing down of your roots happens comparatively quickly to your enamel. So surprisingly, a lot of people develop these notches near the gum lines of their tooth. And I'm telling you as a dentist, it happens a lot. Once again, the results from removing surface stains are very limited and it just depends on how much staining you have to how much results you get. And if you do it too much, you'll start to get more yellow and actually you can get more darkening because it, the teeth will, as they become more transparent and thin, they'll pick up the, darkness from the shadows in the back of your mouth. The next way your teeth can whiten is by drying them out. I compare this to wet concrete. When concrete is wet, it is darker. When concrete is dry, it is whiter. While not as dramatic of a color change as cement and concrete, when your tooth is dry, it is whiter. When it is wet, it is darker. This may seem silly for me to cover, but it's important to understand about teeth whitening gimmicks and why some methods seem to work and actually don't. You see, acids will dry out your tooth. So if you put whatever thing some blogger or YouTuber told you to put on your teeth, if it is acidic, like strawberries or lemons or I think whatever. It will dry out your teeth and then it makes the teeth look whiter because they're dry. This will last however long it takes your tooth to rehydrate. Normally a few minutes to an hour. So it just doesn't have to be an acidic tooth whitening gimmick. Sometimes the tooth whitening gimmick will cause you to stay open a while. So if saliva isn't constantly touching your teeth and you're breathing, the tooth will eventually dry out. So almost any whitening technique 
will whiten your teeth more than it appears at first. And this is because you keep your mouth open, saliva is away from your teeth, and your teeth become more dry. So you'll whiten your teeth and they'll look whiter, and then maybe the next day they won't look as white. This can be a problem for other dentists as well. Let's say we're doing cosmetic work and doing a crown on one of the front teeth, and the patient is open for a long time. And we don't notice the teeth are suddenly drier, and so we want to match the front teeth to some of those other teeth while they're whiter and drier because they've been open for so long. And not realizing it, when we get the other crown back, now that tooth is wider than some of the other teeth if we took the shade of the tooth at an incorrect time. So you can see that this is a real thing, not just for you, but dentists and everyone kind of deals with this when getting the shade of our teeth wider. But ultimately drying out the teeth or whatever you're doing to dry out your teeth doesn't last and the results are as temporary as when you start getting saliva and more rehydrating of the teeth. The next way to whiten teeth is breaking up double bonds of chromogens. Okay, what I just said may sound like a foreign language to you. So I will try and keep this simple and quick. On the surface of your teeth and actually deep in your teeth, you have things that are called chromogens. The name isn't important. These are just molecules that stain your tooth yellow. If you looked at the chemistry of these chromogens, they have double bonds in them. And once again, just bear with me. When you oxidize or take away those double bonds, the chromogens become a lighter color, and thus so does the color of your tooth. In fact, most of the bleach in the world, besides teeth whitening, happens because of this chemistry. So if you accidentally spill bleach on your shirt, what will happen is the little pigments have double bonds in them that now become single bonds because of the oxidation, and then it turns whiter. So you may not care much about that, but it is important to know for the rest of what I'm about to say. This is the method that most people find useful and effective in whitening their teeth, especially for the typical yellow teeth scenario. So now let me get into the specifics of intrinsically bleaching your teeth. There are two main types of bleach that will whiten your teeth intrinsically, hydrogen peroxide and carbamide peroxide. Now those names actually are important but I'll explain them. All the good gel strips and whitening products at the store will normally contain one of these two compounds. Whether you get the over-the-counter whitening products, the take-home trays from the dentist, you go to one of those mall whitening booths, or one of the in-office one-time dental bleachings, they all use these products just in different concentrations. The higher the concentration, the faster it will whiten your teeth, but they will all whiten your teeth eventually. When using the different concentrations, it's just a matter of how fast you want the whitening to get there. The one time in the dental office whitening will whiten your teeth the fastest, which is about two hours. This process allows the highest concentration of hydrogen peroxide. Now there is one downside to using a stronger and higher concentration of bleach. The higher it is, the more likely it will cause temporary teeth sensitivity. When in dentist office whitening first started, it was very painful for some people with sensitive teeth. But now, if the office is smart, they will first use and apply a desensitizer and this will heavily minimize the amount of sensitivity you have. But if you have really sensitive teeth, using a slower approach may be beneficial and brushing with an anti-sensitivity toothpaste will be beneficial to decrease the likelihood of sensitivity. And it will also likely be less expensive too if you use one of the lower concentration methods, like the mall ones, or the take home trays, or the over the counter stuff, which are all good. Now if you've looked and you're trying to decide what the difference is between carbamide and hydrogen peroxide, carbamide peroxide will break down to form hydrogen peroxide. Then it will whiten your teeth. So essentially they're both hydrogen peroxide in the end, but there are a few differences that should help you decide which one is right for you. Hydrogen peroxide works faster, but also wears off faster. So you would only use it for 20 to 30 minutes before it becomes ineffective and it no longer matters what the concentration is. Carbamide peroxide will stay effective for hours, maybe six to eight hours even. So if you leave it in your tray all night on your teeth, which is not recommended, might I say, it will whiten your teeth all night as well. I prefer take home carbamide peroxide as it seems to get my teeth wider faster. I personally get the highest concentration of carbamide peroxide, which on Amazon is like 44%. I will put an affiliate link to that product below this YouTube video. What I like about it is it's much less expensive than all the other options and it's efficient as well. It's not a name brand and it's kind of funny as it just shows up in this normal syringe, but 
like I said, it's effective. Now, if I ever start using it to touch up the whiteness of my teeth, and my teeth start to become sensitive, what I will do is I'll just wait a week until the sensitivity goes away because like I said, it's temporary and then I'll start doing it again. And I make sure I brush with anti-sensitivity toothpaste. My favorite toothbrush is an anti-sensitivity toothpaste and I will also link to that in the description below this video. And you can also watch my video on the best toothpaste, which I will make soon if I haven't already made it. Now quickly, hydrogen peroxide is about three times stronger at lower concentrations. So. 10% hydrogen peroxide is about the same strength as 30% carbamide peroxide. For example, 40% hydrogen peroxide is what we use for the one-time visit in the dental office for whitening. But 44% carbamide peroxide is safe for at-home use and won't get your teeth as white as the 40% hydrogen peroxide like it does in just two hours. Now, one last thing to know about the peroxides and staining the chromogens to get your teeth intrinsically wider is that over time the teeth will start to get more yellow again and that's because those double bonds of the chromogens will start to reappear so like i said touching up your whitening is good to do from time to time but you should be aware of how much is too much because there is such a thing of intrinsically bleaching your teeth too much and this is my biggest warning and downsides to intrinsically bleaching your teeth with peroxides once your enamel has gotten to a certain point of whiteness instead of your teeth getting whiter they start to become more transparent or see-through at this point you should stop whitening your teeth because they won't get any more white in fact they will actually start to appear darker because the shadows once again from the back of your mouth start to show through the enamel and that's more dark and they also become more yellow because the once again the underlying layer called dentin is more yellow and that starts to shine through a little bit more when your enamel becomes more transparent this will happen to most people if they whiten too much a few lucky people can just whiten until they are as white as marshmallows and no transparency or very limited will happen but most of us are not like that and there are two indicators to tell if you have bleached too much first is obvious you will notice your teeth aren't getting any wider the more you bleach this isn't a great indicator because it may be hard to tell but the second way to tell is if you look really close at your front teeth you can start to make out the border of the underlying layer of dentin you can just see kind of that border of where it's at so if you look at this example I can make out where the dentin border is. This person has already bleached too much and won't get any further benefits of bleaching more. Before I move on to other types of bleaching, I wanna address one pet peeve that I always hear people talking about. They always talk about natural bleaching methods. They don't want to do peroxide because it isn't natural. So what do they do? They put banana peels or ground up strawberries or lemons on their teeth. And that supposedly is more natural. But to me, it sounds like a nice way to get more cavities. Or they'll scrub their teeth with activated charcoal. And let me just tell you, none of these are great for your teeth, nor are they natural. The charcoal will, once again, be more abrasive to your teeth. But also, if you want to make up what's natural, you can make the case that hydrogen peroxide is actually more natural as almost every cell in your body produces hydrogen peroxide. Maybe not near as much as you are putting in your mouth to whiten your teeth, but it is at least close to as natural as the other suggested methods of these other bloggers are giving you. So let's actually just stop pretending any of it is natural actually, because what's actually natural is slightly yellow teeth. And if you're here, it's likely because you don't want that. So just recognize that none of this is natural to your teeth. But now actually even a couple more things that I just wanted to say. People are worried about bleaching your teeth, weakening them, and there isn't very good research that it does any significant amount of weakening of your teeth. Um, both structural integrity or cavities. So don't worry about that. Oh, and then one more thing, the liquid hydrogen peroxide, I think it's like 3% or some of the hydrogen peroxide rinses actually won't do much to whiten your teeth because there's such a low concentration and they don't sit on your teeth long enough. They might do a little bit at first if your teeth are really yellow, but after that, you won't get much of a good result with those. Before we move on to the last methods, below this video, I have an affiliate link to my favorite toothbrush and floss that will save you $30. I think it is the best combo for cleaning your teeth. You should watch my video on the best brushing and flossing routine if you want to see how to get 
great oral health results when brushing your teeth. They are stunning. That video I will link to at the end of this video. Next, let's move on to internal staining, not to be confused with intrinsic staining that we just kind of covered. Every once in a while, a tooth will darken from the inside. Normally, this is because the tooth died by some sort of trauma that happened a long time ago, like bumping your teeth, hitting it on a door or from a baseball. When the tooth dies, the inside of the tooth fills with bacteria and turns purple, red, black, and this stains the tooth from the inside. If this happens to you, there are two ways to fix it and one of them is internal staining. To do this, you have to first perform a root canal on the tooth and then bleach the tooth from the inside. You can count on one hand the amount of times I have done this in my 14 years as a dentist. I don't really like it, I just wanted to cover it quickly because it is a possibility. The results aren't very predictable and the tooth, while it may get wider, it still looks different than the other teeth once it's been bleached from the inside. And then a lot of times, it just gets darker over time anyways. So I don't really wanna cover this more because I don't even like it that much, but it is a possibility for a few people out there. If none of the other ways of whitening your teeth work or they don't apply to you, then dental prosthetics are a way. And Dental prosthetics is just a fancy dentist term for veneers, crowns, and composite bondings. There are a lot of defects or things that just won't whiten correctly with your teeth. And if one of these problems that inhibit your teeth from whitening happen to you, then you have to use uh, a crown or a veneer or some sort of bonding to whiten your teeth further. So some of these problems are teeth with white spots on them that won't go away, staining that happens during tooth development, teeth that already have unsightly fillings that are just dark, teeth that you've tried to whiten that won't whiten with other manners, transparency of the teeth from over whitening, staining from metal fillings, internal staining like we went over already, or to just change the overall look of the teeth for whatever reason, then you may have to do crowns, veneers, or bondings because these problems will inhibit you from whitening your teeth from any of the other manners which some of them we've gone over are really good but don't worry if you have to do one of these manners a lot of Hollywood movie stars that you watch in the movies every day have these veneers and crowns and uh, bondings and for some people it is the only way to whiten your teeth the good thing is it whitens them for good and it will get them to look really nice. The downsides are they cost a lot and also you have to file down teeth that might otherwise be healthy. So those are reasons why people don't necessarily like getting these done. It's for each person to weigh out the risks and the benefits in their life. But if you're going with one of these crowns or veneers or bondings, the thing you may want to know is that you should whiten your teeth before you get any of this work done. Because once you have the crowns or the veneers or the bondings, if you ever wanna bleach your teeth further in the future, the rest may get wider, but anywhere you have a crown or a veneer or a bonding, those will stay the same color as your teeth get wider and so you will start to notice the difference and then you'll have to pay to replace those again if you want them all to match. Remember, the links to my favorite brush and floss can be found in the description below this video. So subscribe if you have teeth and I think everybody should at least watch once my video about the best brushing and flossing routine. So watch that one now.